In this tutorial, I'd like to show you how to take OpenType and pair it with glyphs to create some interesting effects that can be used as initial caps, um, decorative elements on your page, um, logos at, for themselves, almost anything you can think of. What I'm going to do is I'm going to start with a, a basic character and then I'm going to embellish it a little bit. I'm going to drag myself a fairly large text box. And I'm going to type a capital A. And I am going to change my font to, again, I'm going to choose an OpenType font. In this choice, I'm going to go with Adobe Caslon Pro. And again, I'm going to go with italic because I know that that is where my swash alternates are going to be hiding. I'm going to go ahead and make this significantly larger. I'm going to bring it all the way up to 140 points so we can see it. Okay, with it still highlighted, I'm going to go over to my character palette and I'm going to go to the open type menu, choose open type, and choose my swash alternate variation. Okay, now what I'm actually going to do is I am going to cut this letter apart a little bit. I'm going to cut the crossbar out of here because I'm going to replace the crossbar with a special glyph. In order to do that, my first step is to turn this into outlines. You may remember doing that in the paths video earlier today. Um, what I'm going to do first is I am going to not highlight it as text like this, but I'm going to click on that black arrow and make sure my text box is selected. Then I need to go up to the open type menu and tell it to create outlines. Okay, this is no longer uh, te or text anymore. It's not editable. It is now a picture shaped like the letter A. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to create a custom shape to cut out this crossbar. I'm going to zoom in so you can kind of see what I'm doing just a little bit better. This is what we did when we when we were doing the tutorial with the moons. We did the two circles and used one to cut the other out. This time we're going to do a custom shape. This time I'm going to take the pen tool. I'm going to come down here and I am going to single click and let up click release, click release, click release, click release, and then get back to the starting point and close up my selection. You'll see a tiny little circle show up next to the pen tool. That creates my shape. This is going to be the cookie cutter in this case. I'm going to make my fill color black, my stroke color none, and then I am going to take my black arrow you see this object selected. I also need to select the letter because they both need to be selected together. So I'm going to hold on my shift key and get the initial itself. Then I need to find my Pathfinder palette. If you remember your Pathfinder palette looks like this. If you don't see it, go up to Window, Object and Layout, and choose Pathfinder. Under the Pathfinder palette, again what I'm going to do is I am going to subtract the frontmost object from the back. If I do that, you'll see that the crossbar is now gone zoom back out again. And now what I'm going to do is I am going to create another text box so I can bring in the glyph that I'm going to use as the crossbar. This time I'm going to go up to my type menu and go to glyphs. From the pull down menu on the bottom I am going to find my font called Adobe Wood Type Ornaments. I suspect it's off your screen. But I'm going to find Adobe Wood Type Ornaments and I am going to choose a glyph from this set. I'm going to double click on it to insert it where my cursor is. Go ahead and close that up. Highlight the font and I'm going to need to make it significantly bigger if it's going to work for what I want it to work for. I'm going to bring it up to about 120 points. Now I'm going to do the same thing that I did with the letter A. I am going to select it with the black arrow to make sure I have the text box. I am going to go up to the type menu and choose create outlines. That is going to turn this into an object instead of a piece of type. Then I'm going to position it up here kind of where I want it to go. I need to rotate it just a tiny bit so I'm going to take my rotate tool out of my toolbox kind of position my rotate tool near an anchor point on the corner and click and drag in the direction I want it to angle. That looks good. And then I'm going to take my black arrow and again reposition it until I get it exactly where I want. Now I've got a glyph that replaces the crossbar. That looks pretty neat, I think. Um, one last thing that we need to do. Right now, these two pieces are still independent of each other. If I were to try to move one, I would be able to. I could easily screw up my object. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to click on one and shift click to grab the other piece so I have both selected or you could do a Apple A select all. I'm going to go back to Pathfinder. This time I am going to combine selected objects into one shape. This is the add button. It's the first in your row of five. If I click on that, now my initial is just one piece. So that is using uh, swash alternates out of the open type set and using glyphs to make decorative characters.